Welcome to This Commerce Life. We are an unscripted podcast dedicated to small businesses and entrepreneurs in the retail and consumer packaged goods space in Canada and the United States. I am Phil Chang, co-host and co-founder. And I'm Kenny Venucci, co-host and co-founder of This Commerce Life. Our love is the journey to retail and our passion is sharing that with you every week. Like, you know, you kind of know and then you kind of don't know, right? Like... Yeah. It's just been one of those mornings already. I just, uh, I was, I was going to jump on early with Kenny and then like, cause I teach at Centennial college and I've been having a couple of like account access issues on some of the things I need. And so, you know, they randomly called, right. I'm like, hi, who are you? And I, I've been trying to get them for days and days and days. Right. So then I'm like, damn it. So I send Kenny this weird, I think I sent you a note, right? I said, well, you sent me a note that you're going to be wait. like five minutes or something. <laughs> and then I hopped on, so I'm waiting. And then Sarah hopped on. I thought, I said, well, I guess I'll talk to Phil in the car. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I like, you know, I've been looking for them. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, hello. And I'm like, oh, crap. Like, I ah, need you, but not right now. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> you take the call when you get the call. Uh, no, because otherwise, like for days and days and days, exactly. I won't be you'll be able back, to find you'll them, be back right? in so, queue. I know. And it'll be the following week, right? I know. I know. Come on, you so, do what you got to do. Anyway. Yeah. anyway, it is um, it is nice to see you. It's nice to see you as well. Yeah. yeah. Excited to be here. My first official podcast, first of many, I know, but. Nice. Milestone. It's one of your milestones. No. Well, it was, sounds sorry. I, I was snooping on the web page, website this morning, mm -hmm. uh, on her website, just to see what it looks like. It looks good. It's nice and clean. And I did look at it, and I thought I saw something down there on podcasts. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, I don't think she's done a podcast yet. I think no, we were well, going to be one of the. If you first. don't have the section, where are you going to put it when you I, actually land? I think it's good. It's ready right. to go. Yeah. It's ready to go. <laughs> Rock and roll, baby. Yeah. All yeah. I, yeah. So I put the I put the link to our fast thought there because it's my my that's first. Yeah. I mean, it's a mini and, mini podcast. Yeah. And then I'll mini put pod. the link to this one and we'll see Very where cool. we go from here. First yeah, of many. We'll see. Sure. We will Onward see. and upward, baby. Yeah. Um. So we have we have Sarah Kinlan on with us. Um, you just heard her say it, but there's a fast thought with her out there. And uh, we, we kind of loved um, talking to you. Um, so we, we asked you to come back. So we're, we're getting a chance to do the podcast. Um, um, I think, so I, I want to tell you something, because I think um, one of the things that came out of our last conversation, even for the two of us, so we've always had a destination in mind um, for the podcast. Um, no, that's not true. We 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 have always had a destination, but we've never had like, you know, any faraway goals for this podcast. We've always wanted to do stuff together. And it's been as obtuse as that. But over the past probably, would you say the last 18 months, Kenny, we've really kind of like honed in on what we want this thing to be. Yeah, 18 months, but I think the last six have really been like, like really, the, the first, really the first truly... three were kind of like First, yeah, yeah first three years we're all over the place. people are listening to us right <laughs> but then yeah like the last the last little bit we've really honed in on what we I want think as, and as the readership has picked up, listenership has picked yeah. up too it's made it a little bit more um pressure for the lack of, a lack of a better word yeah kind of like real. We, you kind of gotta <laughs> grow up and say okay i mean we can't change what we are we're not going to be scheduled yeah. or, or scripted or yeah. organized yeah. like we're just not those people but we definitely can make sure that it's a little I don't know, tighter. I don't know if that's a, yeah. even a good word. I and don't then, know. And then what, what, where I was going was, I, I think what um, we heard out of you that helped us. Big time. Kind of like narrow even more. Because we've always known, but, um, you know, when you, we've got a lot of words in between, um, like knowing and articulating is hard. Mm -hmm. But the little, the North Star um, yeah. bit has been extremely helpful, right? Because both of us, you know, we always knew where we wanted to go. It was just, um, but, but this kind of like helped us kind of go like, now we don't, we don't actually talk about it. Now we just say, listen, North star, right? Like, is this part of the North star or not? Right. We've actually been using the term quite a bit. So, um, so I, I wanted you to know that because I think uh, we're appreciative. We, we learn, I think from our, we like to think we learn from 
I from think our we guests do. as well. Well, we've had so, a few coaches on yeah. like, so, because you're just starting your coaching thing. And, you know, we, we use a lot of what Lori and Jim say, probably more Lori, sorry, Jim, but probably a little bit more Lori, but we always talk about it's choice, choice, choice. Like it's not, yeah. you don't have to do anything. Now we're definitively all over this North star. And that's we've been actually saying it that way so that it's not like it's not ambiguous it's not you know because i think to phil's point like we kind of knew where we wanted to go but i don't know we just shoot the shit and really we know it's somewhere out there but we never put it down so okay i think this is what we really want to do yeah so thank you. you well yeah, 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 I, right, you. I think, thank you thank you i think it was one of your other guests that mentioned the words north star but definitely i am the one that sets the goal and goes after it, right? And get up excited to go for that mm -hmm. goal, okay? Yeah. And mm -hmm. like none of this smart goal crap. Like it doesn't, we don't want it no. to be achievable, realistic, no. or time bound. We're just going no. for it, right? It's no. gotta be big, it's oh. exciting. It gets you out of bed every day. Like Hi. sometimes, you know, when when you're building a marketing campaign or something like that, or or you've got you've got an implementation, then probably a smart goal is a good idea. But I think Not when you're this. aspiring to be something pop it man Just it's go. not about it's it's not about like the acronym s-m-a-r-t right it's really about being actually intuitively smart about you know because you do you you take big swings at things that you're going to miss on i i feel like what we hear a lot from some of the founders is when they when they mix up what S M A R T is supposed to be, and then when they're supposed to be intuitively smart and just take a swing at something, yeah, um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but well, yeah, so Sarah Kinlan's on. Yeah, welcome, Thanks. and um, um, we would love to kind of get um your background and and uh, and where you're from and and what you're what you're moving to. So yeah, the time is yours. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I, I'm so happy to be here on your show. Uh, to all the listeners out there, I am one of you. I'm a huge fan of the show. Um, during the pandemic, I was working from home, uh, running a, a large packaging and warehouse operation from my living room while teaching three kids. And um, after about a year into that, I felt a little bit fluffy. And I thought, I'm not moving enough. My body actually physically hurt from sitting there. I had a desk most of the day. So I started to walk. And while I walked, I started to listen to podcasts. And the podcast that I don't know, I think it was Jeff B. Smith was the first one that I listened to. Okay. Yeah. Because he's yeah. an ex JJ. Ex JJ. Yeah. I knew him from JJ. So we had that connection. Yeah. Then you guys had the JJ connection. So it just felt right. So I started listening and started walking 10,000 steps a day. Since then, it was about two, about two years now that I've missed one day of my 10,000 steps a day. So I've listened to wow. a lot of oh, good. Yeah. Um, That's a lot of podcasts. Lot of podcasts. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm a huge fan of both of you. And I love that Thank it's you. unscripted. And I love that you're bringing on small brands and, and giving them a bit of a voice here. Um, so I, I think that's really cool. I also connect with the manufacturing side of all the brands that you have um, spent many, many years in manufacturing. Um, Six Sigma Black Belt. I love process improvements. I more, even more so love people improvements. So um, that's why I'm getting into the coaching side of things, um, helping people set their goals and achieve them. So um, so that's how I got here, I, I guess, became a fan of you guys. Um, and then I think you guys were at CHFA and you were talking to Janelle Matheson from John Luke mm -hmm. and Hill, right. many of your listeners will know. Um, I've known her for my entire life. Well, her entire life, I guess. She's my baby sister. Um, <laughs> so her and I uh, grew up in a very fun household. We have uh, nine kids in our family. So we're hashtag Zettel9. Jeez. Um, yeah, so we learned about leadership and teamwork at wow. a very, very young age. Oh, um, really? nine kids. Wow. Being resourceful and resilient. <clears throat> for sure. So, um, so yeah, big, huge family. Um, should give a shout out to all of them, not just my one sister, Janelle, but she said to make sure that I mention her. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, she practically attacked us at the show. So, yes, thank you, Janelle. We love yeah. her. Thank you. Oh, my gosh, you sent yeah. some energy. Holy moly. Yeah. 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 So she's my sister. Yep. Yeah. We have a lot in common and a lot of differences, but um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, then she got us connected again and we did the fast thought and then here we are today. So 
Um, more about my story, I, you know, was the rule follower of my whole life. So, you know, was the first of the nine to go to post-secondary, first to get a degree. I have a degree in chemistry from the University of Guelph, super geeky. Um, there was eight people in my graduating class. <laughs> it's not a popular sport. Um, but uh, got the degree, got the husband, got the house, got the kids, like, got the great career, was climbing the ladder. Um, life was awesome. And then got to a spot in my career where it was like, okay, well, if you want to go the next rung on the ladder, you're going global. So you're going to move to Europe or you're going to move to Asia um, and, and continue to grow your career. And I have this really nice husband that I really like. <laughs> um, and he owns a business here in Southwestern Ontario. So at that time, that was pre-pandemic, going into a global role um, meant that you physically would move to that spot. Yeah, so yeah. Um, how, it wasn't how old really are the kids? For me. How old? Oh, yeah. At that point, um, the kids are today. They're eighteen, fifteen, and eight. Okay. So, so this is going back four or five years. Yeah. So yeah, they were yeah still like early teens and were yeah yeah tough to move teens. right like it's it, not, it's you know, not, the oldest would have grown some roots here. You know, yeah, you yeah. get into that age where your friends are now your high, yeah. going to be your high school friends yeah. and exactly. all that fun stuff. Yeah. yeah, and and I think the other way because I went the other way right is I got there and then um did a global role but i did it from here um yeah. but the kids were really small then right like so the kids were gosh i think they were like three four and eight okay um so kind of like 18 months of traveling you know like mm -hmm. i think it was i was in the, i there was one trip that i was in the uk for a week and then i got extended out because i had to go see the jane j folks in vienna um you know kind of awesome in the UK, get to go to Vienna. But, you know, somewhere halfway through that trip, I realized like I've been gone for 10, 11 days. Like I'll be, it'll be four, it'll be half a month that I'll be gone from the house. Right. And then that was like, you know, that's the flip side of you either move and everybody goes or you go, well, I'll go. Right. And that yeah. seems fun. And then after <laughs> a while, you're like, this is not fun. Not because they're all fun. growing up without yeah. me right so yeah and 14 uh, days away from a newborn is like it's an eternity a tenth of their lifetime right exactly <laughs> like, it's, it's yeah. you miss so many things yeah. yeah 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 it's craziness plus you have an unhappy spouse potentially at home because True. there are a 100%. lot of work there are a lot of work <laughs> yeah. i don't know why doesn't she want to talk to me i don't understand <laughs> Yeah. Like, she's too busy or too tired like what's are there one or the other or then if she has time left she'll be angry at me right but <laughs> Yes, exactly. So yeah, so moving global didn't feel like it was going to be the right fit. So I started exploring opportunities that I could go like kind of across Canada. Um, and so I moved into a, a distribution role, which was fun. It was fine. Um, I was the quality manager for a big for the distribution center in Canada. Um, and but I knew I'm like, okay, I, I have to figure something else out, right? Um, and so my son was my, both my sons were playing on the high school football team for, for one year, they got to play on the same team together. Awesome. And, uh, it's funny cause one was one six foot five and the other one was maybe five foot six. So <laughs> they're very cute together, um, in their little photo on the football field, but on the football field, on the sidelines, I ran into another football mom who had left J and J maybe about 10 years prior. And I was like, mm. what are you up to? And she was telling me her story that she started a coaching business and she's doing a lot of speaking and workshops and things like that. And, and Wait, I was who like, did you meet? Danielle Jaworski. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so she, um, so we connected and a few months later I started in a coaching program with her and the program that she led is called thinking into results. It's Bob Proctor, uh, based, um, mm -hmm. Procter and Gamble company based. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I said that wrong. It's not Procter and Gamble. It's Procter and Gallagher. Sorry. Gallagher. Oh, um, it's still PG. Uh, not competition not online. A different PG. <laughs> a different PG. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I caught myself there. So I did this thinking into results thing. And what I learned is that your thoughts control your actions, control your results. So six months intensive, lots of time discovering myself, who I am, did lots of like therapy on the side, um, 
I had, I used to have extreme anxiety, for example, I did some therapy to help me get through that anxiety that came from being in the big household where, you know, going out the door, you hurried to get in the car, you'd be in big trouble, right? So um, because it was a big deal when any of us went anywhere. So that anxiety mm -hmm. of leaving the house <laughs> stuck with yeah. me, but I was finally able to work through that, did a lot of self-discovery over the past 18 months and came to creating, well, creating the company Pearl Performance. Um, so my company, I've done a lot of coaching and I'm just getting into speaking now. So um, as I'm on my first podcast. So my goal, the goal I set is I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm a world renowned seeker, coach and educator. So I've been taking steps every day to get to that goal and having so much fun doing it. So that's awesome. You haven't stopped smiling. So that's kind of nice to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the COVID mask was very hard for me because my favorite thing is my smile. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard. That mm -hmm. that was hard. Um, this is very cool. How do you? So you still have a full time job, mm -hmm. and then you've got this coaching thing on the side. You're still smiling. Yeah. <laughs> right. So 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 that tells you something too, right? Because um, lots of full timers don't smile when they start side hustling because it. Yeah. Feels like too much work. Yeah, yeah, it feels like too much work, right? So you kind of know when you're yeah. you're that entrepreneur type because you do something new and you're still smiling and juggling everything else, right? So yeah, I don't do hard. I I think hard is a series of easy steps if you break it down. So um every if if something is hard for me, I've really triggered to stop now. So it's if I'm like folding laundry and feeling frustrated, I just walk away. Like no one's going to fold that laundry if I walk away from it. It'll still be there when I come back an hour later, right? Um, so I, I just, if things get hard, and not that laundry is hard, but sometimes you could be frustrated no, because yeah, right. you don't fold laundry and yeah. everyone else is outside playing or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, So yeah. if things get hard, I just stop. And, and that's something new for you? Or is that, or that something is new? brand new. Brand spanking yeah. new. How did you well, figure this one that's out? Not, that's not part of the rules, right? Is it's yeah. Well, it's not like, part of the rules. I'll start. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. especially like if you come from corporate, right? You mm -hmm. know, you start a task, you finish, and yeah. you finish it. But what people don't understand, like in what well, I don't understand, everybody's got issues in life. But in corporate, like you could have a task at nine, and by ten have four of them, and they're all important, and you got to do the prioritizing or whoever the boss, the biggest boss gets gets the win, I guess. Yeah, but it's hard to it's hard to do the walk away it's hard to it's hard it's, it's hard to say it's hard and just say well i'm not going to do it right now come back that's a, that's a hard thing to learn it's a hard thing to, to discipline yourself to do i know the example laundry people are going to think well big deal well yeah it's part of a lot of things it's the laundry it's the dishes it's one more email whatever i mean yes. it's yeah. it's all of that yeah. so what did you, so the part of your coaching is this something you, that you learned to do like yes. Yeah, so we discovered this thing called flow and ease. And you, there's lots of books about being in a state of flow and, and coming from process excellence background, like I love when things are in flow, right? Um, I also learned a statement called, it's uh, illogical is more efficient. And I love to be efficient. So those two things go together, right? Illogical okay. is more efficient. So if it's illogical, if it doesn't make sense, it's probably more efficient. Like when you're working, 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 trying to get work done, it would be illogical to stop working. But it's also way more efficient. Yeah, because yeah. As soon Actually, as I understand that. Okay. Just get yeah. up, walk away, come yeah. back. It's so much easier. So yeah, I, I take a lot of breaks. I walk a lot, as I mentioned, right? And I get a lot of shit done in a short time. I, I You know what? I, I We do that. For sure. I agree with it. I, I just sure. think it's, a, I, I'm, I'm thinking like, I don't know what Kathy's like, Phil, but I know what Amelia is like. Yeah. And sometimes I, I wish she would just walk away. Uh, Kathy's relentless, right? Right. Like it, and it's it, once not you a start walk grinding. Away. That's just, then like, I'm thinking, and then there. I watch rabbit holes and I can, I can feel yeah. it, you know, because we're on the couch together. Usually, you know, it's like this one yeah. legs this way, one legs this way. And you can feel it where it's just, oh, fuck right into the rabbit hole. We went. Yeah, we're spinning now. Yeah. Right. I'm thinking, you know what? You should just, well, last, last close week I it said to and him, just do anything. Go have a bowl of ice cream. Last I week I said to him, I'm not doing this. I'm done. And then I went to play volleyball. 
right? And then came back and it was just so much better. So easy. So much yeah. better. Um, but it's a hard I, thing I to wanted do, to just take wiring, one second right? and show you this because I have this kicking around. Oh, yeah, so I have one of Kenny. those. This is the, um, so, so there's a whole missing piece here. There's like a great big green slab that goes underneath this. And it's it's when you get the red belt, because J&J &J likes to make everything J&J-ish. Yeah. So yeah. when you do Six Sigma J&J &J and you get a red belt, then you get a moose. Yeah. I don't know why a moose, but you get a moose on this great um, cool. green slab thing. And the green slab kept getting in my way, so I just unscrewed it. Um, but I yeah, love the little right. moose, so I keep the moose around, so. Love it. There you go. Yeah. I actually see it. Like it's it's you can't see it from here, but it's like behind me yeah. on the shelf there. And I saw it while you're talking. I was like, oh, I gotta show her. So, I have that moose as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the good <Yeah>. old days. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. So yeah. Sarah, where where you 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 worked with your friend um, yeah. the other soccer mom to cut did so was she she was coaching you or did you did you he was coaching take me. a formalized yeah. course as well yep um no i did not take a formalized coach uh, a coaching program or certification i um took over 20 years of coaching people experience that I well, that makes sense yeah. yeah do you have to do the other side though like does it no no it's a total paradigm yeah and there's it's not a coming from a regulated industry, it's the coaching industry is not regulated, right? No one's going to ask you what your certification is. If you help them achieve great goals, that's all that matters, right? Mm -hmm. I've worked with, I've since worked with lots of other coaches who are not certified, right? I don't know if you, uh, yeah, the certification part, I, I first off, I don't even know who certifies that. You know, yeah. I don't think there's a national coaching you, board or there's, no, you, could, you know. Like I could do a one hour course and get a coaching certification. Right. Say, if I coach. I could also just be myself. Yeah, go that route. Yes. Yeah, yeah, go that route. <laughs> I'm pretty like I'm pretty. I grew up in a small town. I'm pretty honest and authentic. Like, I it, it's just that's who I am. So I put it all out there, right? Yeah. I like it. I like it too. I like it. Yeah. So wait. So tell me what what's your so what's your coaching business called? Uh, Pearl Performance Incorporated. Okay. So. Um, sarahkinlin.com is my website. Um, yeah, so I have this 10 week coaching program where I kind of like, there's kind of three things that I like to talk about grit and grace, flow and ease, as we just talked mm -hmm. about, and then rest and reflect, right? So we talked a lot about the resting part. I also started journaling to really reflect, right? And it's, it's so amazing because you think that you're not accomplishing anything. And then you just look back in your journal one month ago and it's like, Holy crap, I've come a long Holy way. Holy crap. Right? Yeah. yeah. So on those three things or six things, however you want to say it, I have a 10-week program. We are, I walk people through those steps and help them develop a bit of grit. Like, what's your grit statement? I have a grit statement that I write down every day. It's faith over fear. I live my life freely and on my own terms. I spend the most time doing what I want to and love to do. I try new things. I'm growing. So that's my grit statement. I say it over and over to myself. Lots of different things within that, but it makes me feel like I can do anything, right? I help people develop grit statements that will be nothing like that or might mm -hmm. be similar to that, mm -hmm. but right. it's meaningful to them, right? Then I have a grace affirmation. Um, I am strong. I am beautiful. I can do all of this. And anytime I'm feeling that overwhelmed, I play it over my head. And that was the big thing about thinking into results. It's a lot about getting it to your subconscious, right? So, so that you don't even have to think about it. You just know, right? I'm strong. I'm beautiful. I can do all of this. I've written that in my journal a thousand times easily. So um, I have it on the sides of my monitors as well, um, both of those statements. So in my coaching program, I'll help people develop these affirmations that are meaningful to them that will help them, right? Because Grit is like relentless pursuit of your goal, but grace is like forgiving yourself if you're not perfect. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you need both of them to go right. forward. You need the right balance of them. Then we talk about flow and ease, right? And and getting into the state of flow and what that means for people and helping them um, just realize that everything that they need is going to come to them exactly when they need it, right? So just not not being stressed out, not being worried, but being willing to receive what's coming your way right 
Then we talk about the importance of rest and taking lots of breaks. I'm, I would say like I'm a wellness buff. Like I, I really enjoy wellness. I enjoy eating healthy. I enjoy working out. I enjoy movement, exercise, drinking tons of water. Um, I'm not the fittest person you've ever seen in the world. I'm also not the unfittest person, right? So I, I feel like I have a good balance on a healthy lifestyle. I like to drink beer. Um, <laughs> What's your favorite beer? Um, Bud Light. I'm a Bud Light drinker. Okay. Yes, okay. I know. Some people would say that's not really beer, but no, I was just no gonna. I was, I was gonna judge you on it. Just, just for fun. Really? That's no. Bud yeah. Light. But I love the yeah. fact you drink beer. Yeah, like my sister drinks those IPAs, like IPAs and. Fancy, I, grew up, fancy. I grew up in a small town too, and you know what? It would be like a Coors Light, Bud Light, yeah. Miller type of town, and you know well, what? We yeah. drank it happily, and I didn't. Nothing care. wrong with it. Nothing yeah. wrong with it. Yeah. I still like to judge because it's yeah. fun just to piss off people off, pick on them. You have to do that. It's a podcast. Yeah, it can't be all that nice, Phil. No. Jeez. Yeah. So, um, I love my Bud Lights. People know that about me. Like for my birthday, you know, you'd normally bring someone a nice bottle of wine. My Grace friends a Bud like, Light, baby. Talk about Bud Light. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> no, that'll do. That's from having a lot of allergies, and actually, it's not something yeah. that affects my allergies. So seriously. But, yeah, really? all the beers okay. drive me mental. I still drink beer, but it, it, they all I don't, seem to just. I've got the Asian enough. gene, right? So it makes my head blow up and all these things. So I don't. Tequila is pretty much the only thing I drink now. Okay. So, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only drank tequila one time. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear a lot of those. There's a lot of people with it. Tequila is one of the yeah. few drinks that basically, uh, yeah. or there it's is that one time where yeah, you yeah. stop drinking tequila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The day I started and stopped happened to be the same day. <laughs> yeah, that's a little more unique than many, but yeah, that's yeah. yeah I, I've got I've got that one day as well. I actually yeah. think I've had like a margarita with tequila since, and, and yeah, oh yeah, yeah, there was yeah. that one time. Yeah, and mojitos oh, yeah. should only be made, you yeah, know, with tequila. Yeah. Just yeah. in case you're ever going down that road, yeah. like mojitos. Okay. It's just sometimes it's the smell. Like yeah. I mean, it's one of those drinks. I think the time I my disastrous evening. I think it took thirty years before I could smell it again without having my stomach roll seriously it was just one of those yeah yeah for that's sure hilarious. That's hilarious. Um, okay so then I, so hang, hang on. i, I want to go back to flow and ease for a second okay yeah because um this one really resonates with me because i think um kenny and i are are i think we're really good at at grit um we're really good at giving each other grace um not very good at giving it to ourselves no. Um, but it's it's why we're good partners that way because we we give each other a lot of grace. I think the one that we've struggled with that we fought a lot is flow and ease to me, um, because we do we we there's a lot of grit between the two of us. We grind um, and we're pretty relentless when we want something we go get it. Yeah. Um, but then to recognize what's in front of us, sometimes you get so gritty that mm -hmm. you think all of it needs to come hard yeah right and so i think like kenny don't you think like i think i can do the first the two last... the last two it's the middle two that <laughs> the last the three or hard. four months have been the oh, two of us yeah. you know giving each other a lot of grace going yep fucking dumb ass like yeah. it's right in front of you why do we gotta go all the way around but it's almost like because you've developed um this knack for being gritty that when the front door is open, you automatically think, well, that it can't be that easy. I must, I must need to break a window that's and climb hard. in, you know, over broken glass. I think glass that's a cynic or, in us know, too, like, right? It's, just, yeah, it's too yeah, easy. Yeah, well, it can't be true. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to keep grinding, yeah. even though if you just took yeah. a breath of air, it's there. Yeah. No, everything in life is easy. It is everything. It will come to you with ease. And there's a great little video. I'll send you the link for it, but um, it's from Bob Proctor, but he's watching a fly at a window and the fly is painstakingly buzzing, trying to get through the window, yeah, banging buzzing, the window. And you're thinking it's hitting the, window, hitting, the window, hitting the window. And if the fly were to turn around, it would see the door behind him is open and he could fly out, but the fly dies trying to get out the window. Yeah. Right. And it's just that, like, there's always an easier way. Like everything you're doing, if it's hard, there's an easier way. Right. That's so, a hard thing to to, to ram is. into your head, though, because we know what when Especially you're. Especially you guys, you're so connected. There's always an easier way. 
you can, you can reach out to someone and say, Hey, what do you think? How should I do this? What's an easier way to do this? Do so, it. Like, so that only flow. works. That works, oh. the, that's, so, that works in the reverse. Like we give people yeah. shit for that and say, well, all you have yeah. to do is call us. Yeah. Yeah. We but, could have we fail to call. We fail to call a lot. We're terrible at the other way. Yeah. You got to yeah. ask for help. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, I was. So that's that's happened. been some. It's yeah, it's been a learning. Not, yeah, it's been a learning. And then the and then sometimes part we call and they go, "We don't know what took you so long." We're like, "We don't know either." We don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> what seemed should should have seemed pretty easy. I, mean, I don't know why we made it yeah, as complicated yeah. as we yeah. did, but I think yeah. we're just really good. At, I just don't think we believe it. That's what it is. Yeah, like, like, I think it, it's in front of sort of thing. It can't be true. Uh, it can't yeah. be. It was definitely a skill of mine. I could make the easiest thing as hard as it could be. Like I always made things harder than it needed to be. That's yeah. that was part of my way of being for the first 20 years of my career. And and so it's been hard for me to be like stop, there's got to be an easier way. What's another way we could do this? Like oh, yeah. I'm always thinking there has to be another way. Yeah. Even things like like a kid needs dropped off somewhere and I'm supposed to be on a call with somebody else. Yep. It's like, how am I going to make this happen? And then it will come to me that there's an easier way. Right. So yeah, it's once you discover it, it's really awesome. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. things go your way. Right. I love it. I love yeah. it. Grit and grace. Well, flowing. Okay. Sorry. So I interrupt you and That's then okay. you were talking about rest and reflect. Yeah. So rest and reflect. Of course, we talked a lot about taking breaks. Um, but truly resting, right? Like I was the person that worked, I want to say at least 60 hours a week, but probably upwards of 70 because I was running a 24 seven operation. So Saturday nights at 10 or no, Saturday nights at 6 PM until Sunday at 6 AM, the, the plant wasn't running, but other than that, it was running. Right. And so I was always on, I was talking to my supervisors, like getting, you know, getting them set up for their shift. Then I'd go to sleep for a little bit, wake up, check in. How did the shift go? Like it was all the time. Um, and so there was no rest. Um, and so I, it took me like two years to learn how to rest. Like now my weekends, I rest. I don't work. Um, mm. I, don't, I don't check in on emails. I don't do any work on weekends. I rest. And on Mondays, I kill it. Like Monday is my favorite day of the week because I get so much done because I'm so rested, right? You don't have Sunday night anxiety? No Sunday night worries anymore. No, gone away. But how did you get rid of those? Yeah, because that's that's a big corporate trait, right? Like, like that's a big work definitely trait. Definitely. Like, seriously. My, yeah, yeah. Like my my years at JJ, I, I definitely like Sunday night. You know, Friday night, some anxiety letting yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then taking all day Saturday off and and not wanting to peak. Yeah. Um, not wanting to look. And then by Sunday, you know, midday ish, you could just, you could, you could feel it. Right. You could kind of just yeah, like, you mm -hmm. know, and by 9 PM, you. it's like, I got to go look like I, I, I bet maybe you I feel. can answer 18, 20 emails. <laughs> if we talk, if we yeah. went back to the, like, like the last hundred podcasts, yeah, yeah. I'd be surprised if anybody are having restful Sunday evenings. I really would. I think everybody's just wired for sound and I don't, and it's not good. I mean, we should be able to Friday at five, let's say five. Yeah. You shouldn't have to turn Summer back hours on now, three o'clock. Okay. Even more better do that one. And then you shouldn't have to turn on till Sunday, like at seven or Monday till seven. Yeah. Eight in the morning. Like, why do you need to, turn, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I really don't know a lot of people who can do that. Like I think no. most people I know have Sunday night anxiety, but, whether but, it's my but that's friends. Though. It's you and I for sure. It's yeah. work like my teacher yeah. friends have it. Um, like everybody I know who's working sure. has it. Like I don't know anybody who does it, and it's not good. No. But yeah. it, but it's us though, right? Because even J and J, like at J and J, we worked a lot, right? Like I think like most cultures, you work a lot, but yeah. there was never a moment where somebody said you know, you better be online or you better answer things prompt. Like I actually <laughs> found it the other way around, right? Like even the, the summer, summer hour Fridays, it's, it's me who wouldn't follow, right? Like you, you, like everybody, everybody who works at JJ qualifies for the summer hours because you work a million hours during the week. So the Friday after you should be able to take it off. It's us that get in the way, right? Not, not the company, the company doesn't, 
really, I, I've never really had, well, maybe a couple of times during planning season, I felt pressure to be on, right? Because there were things that had to be done. But for the most part, it wasn't. It was, it was it me, right? Like I just, yeah. yeah, it was me. I just, I couldn't, like, it's us, right? Like, we, we just don't know how to let go. But is it us or is it built into the system? It never asks for it. No. Mm. I, I, I get that. And it, always the policies and all the talk will be, oh, no, no, you should really shut down Friday. You should turn it back Monday. Just have your great weekend. And yet it's there's this underlying pull. Now, it, I think a lot of it obviously is us because we control our own worlds. But I do think it's just baked in. Because all of us, not all of us, but many of us suffer this. It can't be just. Oh, yeah. I bet you 75% of, of the workforce suffers from this. Right. Yeah. 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 But that's yeah. that can't be just the individuals then to me. Like there's something greater playing. Like I think I think it's like it's an unsaid thing. But it's almost like you have to be this freaking wreck on Sunday night, which is so stupid. Yeah. Because for it what? It's a waste of energy. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, is if you try it, just try it one time. Like just don't work on Sunday nights. Go drink a couple beers with your buddy. Go have a you know hot tub and go to bed early. Do something other than checking email. Yeah. And see what happens Monday morning. Cause you'll feel so restful. You will get you'll be working at two or three times the speed that you normally would be. So yes, it's that's true, but Sunday night because you're worrying so much about yeah. Monday. Right? But, but yes, that's true. But it, I think it takes, so my opinion, I think it takes a few cracks at it. Because I it think does. the first time I did it, I was anxious because I was anxious. Right? Because <laughs> you, you kind of go, well, I'll just jump on for a sec. Just, just, yeah, the anxiety you know, then, of not doing you know. this creates more anxiety than if I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But But you're right because now... Every now and then I'll jump on, but for the most part, I think on Sunday nights, I don't really, like I talk to Kenny every day, but I don't really, that's not really, dude, I, I don't see just, you, nah, I don't whatever. see talking to you like work. It's just, no. you're, yeah, that's why you guys you're have my stuff. brother, right? So yeah, it's different. Know, it's like family, right? Time, whatever. But, yeah. 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 But that's good. That's cool. I, I like that. I like um, the other thing I do is to help with this is Friday afternoon. I block an hour in my calendar where I set up the following week. So I have oh, an hour. So you kind of know what's coming. Actually, you know what? That probably is the smartest. Go through my calendar and then like any, yeah. you know, any conflicts, get rid of them, um, make updates, add whatever I need to add um, and make sure that I know my calendar is fine and I know what time I'm starting Monday yeah. morning. And then. You're, then, yeah. you're a smart. That's a smart, smart cookie. Yeah. Because I think when you do that. Yeah. In theory, then on sunday night the reason i'm probably or hopefully going to be a little calmer is i already baked it in on friday afternoon i mean what's changed nothing yeah right so really what do i need to look at i've already done it i already know what's coming that's probably not the, that's probably a really good idea yeah again it's just a discipline on the friday afternoon to not do that extra hour of nothing and do something for you so that your fault your next week is going to be a little more pleasant it starts well at least and friday afternoons you're tired anyway right your brain's not working the best to actually right. be work you might as well manage your calendar right like yeah spend, take an hour and, and figure out what's not that it even takes an hour but i always have an hour blocked to do that so hmm. okay so so tell me about who who the program is for i mean it, it yeah. you know as we're talking through it, it sounds like there are parts of this that are good for everybody. Well, I mean, it clearly can lend to us. We've already used even some of it. Yeah. I mean, it was very, very yeah. ethereal and high level, but we did take yeah. a couple of things with Sarah said. No, no, the concept involved. was enough, right? Like the done. concept was enough for now, us. Now we still don't for... do a well in between yeah. necessarily, but that's a whole different yeah. that's a yeah. that's a that's a university course. Yeah. So <laughs> that's you know, when people are starting a business, like I'll take any clients that come my way right yeah. um so i may still be in that phase but the clients that i have loved working with the most have been the like I, i've worked with a few new to canada people so um that's super rewarding just just helping them like okay my favorite trait in people is bravery right mm -hmm. bravery means that you're i remember taking this course the eight eight behaviors of innovative people 
One of them was bravery. I don't remember the other seven, but brave people are innovative, right? Right. Brave people are gritty. Brave people try new things. They're not afraid. They take risks. Like they're amazing. They can do anything. So to me, if a woman packs up her family and moves to Canada, they're freaking brave. To me, an oh, immigrant, an, an immigrant is brave. Period. Let's move somewhere where we don't know anybody. We may or may not speak the, don't language, speak the language. And yeah. they could or could not care about the skills I bring. Yeah. Right. I mean, what? that takes that like, takes that takes gut. Like, I mean, all our parents immigrated, right? Yeah. And you know, when you Easy. talk to them and how they discount it, and you're thinking, shit, you came with yeah. 20 bucks, you didn't speak the language. Yeah. You know, that's ballsy. Exactly. You know, wow. So, yeah. Like, wow. So, so I've coached a few women who are new to Canada. That's awesome. And helped them set goals, set boundaries, because they just think, yes, I'll do it. Yes, I'll do it. Yes, I'll do it. Like they'll do whatever their boss asks them to do because they want to stay in Canada and right. be successful. But it's like, okay, but this is your job. This is what yeah, you're it's not a condition of staying in right? the country. We're not that country. No, <laughs> yeah, like, no. no, that's offside. Yeah. Yeah, but, but that's a hard thing to so, learn when you come from other cultures, right? Yeah. So, so I found that amazing, like that's awesome. coaching the, those women, um, and and helping them set a goal and helping them set boundaries. And I coached a few people through like moving from one job to another and getting setting out that transition plan and what that looks like. And they're like, really? Like I don't have to do both jobs for six months? It's like it's not you're not going to do two jobs for six months like we're going to have a transition plan you're going to talk to the outgoing manager and the ingoing manager we're going to figure this out right and and just like helping them set out that communication plan and putting things in writing and it just gives them this relief right because i think they have all this overwhelm right that they have to do all this stuff but when you put it down on paper and make it simple and put some steps to it then they're like oh i can do this right so, yeah. Mm. So, th so those have been my favorite clients so far. But okay, yeah, because yeah, you know the the other, I mean, the one that we probably talk about, um, we used to talk about a lot, but we've we've kind of focused way more on the brands now. But there there are folks, right? Um, you think of kind of anyone in a big corporate job, you know, you you because we all do similar sort of things we kind of chase the ladder you move you move you move and then you hit a point where you go okay i'm not moving because there are less chairs than there are bodies right so right. either i've got to play some funky games to get there which i don't want to do or i could do the tried and true and wait my turn but i might be 80 before i get a yeah. shot at it uh, but, but then yeah. But, but yeah, and it's boring and all of those sort of things. And then what you realize, and then a lot of them have aha moments where you go, wait, I don't, I don't actually know, like I'm really good at this company, right? But what do I have that I can offer? And we tell them the same thing all the time is you do. You just need to repackage it a little. You need to go out and see the world a little and figure out that you've got a lot to offer. Yeah. But I feel like those folks would really benefit from time with you. Right. Because a lot of them, they've no idea where to start. They've no idea. You know, the the um, the one guy I, I talked about him on this show with Lori Shoplin, like way, way, way back in the beginning. Like, so I didn't even know I was being coached until we were like three quarters of the way through the show. You remember that show? Ken? Well, I remember we had a couple shows. Yeah, that, that, I like, think you know, I was coached I think first was and the, I didn't like it. Then yeah. we coached you and I thought this is way more yeah, fun yeah. than you. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it was like under a, like episode 100, actually. Yeah. And and so today he is still I talk to him all the time. I talk to him every three months or so. And he is he's working on it. So now we've we've got a bit of a plan going, but it took him basically five years of wandering around. Right. And yeah. and he kind of laments the same thing. He's oh, it took so long. And I go, you know what? It's a process, dude. Like he. You know, some people spend their whole lives before they figure out what's next, right? Like, you only took five years. It's good. Like, yeah. What's exactly. the, you yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. And what's the rush either? Like, why do we need to be in such a hurry? This is the one time around you get, right? Yeah. Like, it doesn't, you don't need to rush it. If uh, you're FOMO, FOMO does that. Day, 
you're going, right? Yeah, but people have FOMO is a big deal right now. It really is because, you know, when you're going on all the mediums or wherever and you're seeing what the whole world's doing and you should be, you know what I mean? Like people just don't come back to even the last part, which is the rest and re reflect, right? Yeah. Is sit back and, I mean, really take a look at it. I mean, especially in our in our country. I and mean, we have a lot of problems in the country and we piss them on a lot. Like we really do. And a lot of it's legit, no doubt. But if most of us really sat down take and took a real look, like seriously, not many better places to be, We're right, blessed. really. And not many better places for opportunity. And, you know, even with all the inequalities, loads of fairness built into it with all the problems, lots of really cool shit happening, right? I mean, I think I think that's where it's to me, like even because flow and ease, like him and I are going to probably struggle with till the day where the day we part. We'll get better at it as time goes on, it but it's, 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 it's yeah. probably really not the, the, the grit and grace. I think we can do um, rest and reflect. I think the reflection is the part I really wish I would spend more time doing like even most people I know, because I do, I think um, just fear of missing out is just way too, way too yeah. prevalent and baked into our world. It's really not healthy. I think yeah. you and I are getting flow. Because we we, we recognize that when we've got grit and grace, yeah, slowly flow comes with it, right? Because yeah. when you put enough grit into stuff and you start moving it, the opportunities come. But ease is uh, ease. We're just not that bright. But if you're I'm really not wired like that, right? you'll have like, ease. Like yeah. they go together. Yeah, I know. We're not, we're not that. We're not that bright. Well, yeah. yeah. It's so amazing how you can how you can can't, delineate you can't things that should be together. Ease gracefully, maybe is yeah. how <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think we're just problems. Really. <laughs> we lack gracefulness. I think is we yeah. lack a lot. Of That's an <laughs> Not a lot of cool things, but we lack a few good ones. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I yeah. think this is where I like Sarah. I, you know, it's funny. Like when if I go back, and you guys probably do too. If you go back to let's say 10, 15 years ago, and the J and Js and the Londons and a lot of the big companies would bring you know, the coaches, consultants and all the talks in, and we'd all just fucking reluctantly go to the class because you had to go, right? You'd sit there and, you, and for a large time, you know, you'd, you'd hate it to start. By the end of it, you think, oh, there's some pretty cool nuggets in here. And, like, and you learn some stuff. You'd probably think, well, I'm never going to tell them I enjoyed it because we talked so badly about it before it started. We can't change now. So you don't say, but you do pick up things, right? But it's been really cool in the last probably, well, since I've been out and we've been doing this, there's so much more, um, coaching available in business, et cetera. That's not, I don't know. It seems different now. It just seems a lot, I don't know, a lot less textbooky and more like it's really about, it's almost counseling or therapy. It feels yeah. like it's just changed so much. And, and, and the community seems to be accepting it more. I know so many people who have advisory boards or coaching people like it's just mm -hmm. seems so mm -hmm. in now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it definitely, it's definitely a community out there. There are a lot of coaches, coaches that coach on all different things. I have a visibility coach. I have a speaking coach um, and I have like a, a money making coach. Right. So three different coaches going right now um, and all of them different, all of them helping me. Right. So it's awesome. Yeah. So it is, it is a great world. Um, I think a, like you, you always think of building that network when you're starting your career. Do yeah. I have a sponsor? Do I have a mentor? Do I have a, a great manager that I can depend on? But having a coach is not something I had in my 20 years, my first 20 years of my career, right? No. Nobody yeah. ever offered it to me. Nobody ever said that'd be a good idea. And like, I think, you know, I would be ruling the world if I would have had a coach earlier, right? So, and I do think, you know, the, the reason why I started this business is I started counting down my years to retirement and I don't want to be counting down my years to retirement. No. Like, I'm not waiting for retirement to live my best damn life. Right. And I've had a great life, but now it's about to really take off. Right. So I, I also yeah. think that retirement is incorrect. Like yeah. I, I think this notion, this notion of retirement, like I'm okay with the notion. I, I, I like to think of retirement more as, I'm going to stop doing what I'm currently doing and be doing something else. Right. And, but I also think that one is we, we are living a lot longer. So if you think you're going to retire at 65 
You live to 95, you got 30 years. You're going to be like, out of money by the time you're 85 and going yeah, back. Well, here. you should <laughs> be like, I mean, you retire. I mean, the old days you retire at 65, you make it to 75 ish before yeah. 80, you're done. Right. And so all of a sudden you kind of go, yeah, okay, I can bridge the gap on 10 ish years. Right. Right. But now, like, you're at your half life almost. Right. Like, people are. You know, you're definitely you're, you're no definitely going to into their 85s and 90s, right? Like my grandfather passed away at 104, right? If yeah. I retire at 65, I'll be broke. Like I, <laughs> there's yeah. no, you know, and I, also I don't want to do that. Like I, I just couldn't see my brain turning to mush after. I think that's the second right? part. Like, I don't think it's so much the monetary. Oh. Like I think like the concept of of retiring, to me, is very old. In yeah. that. You know what? If you go back 50 years and life expectancy was 75, retiring at 65 sort of made sense because you only mm. had, let's say, on average 10 years left. Yeah. You right? were already fighting, you know, illnesses that were probably going to get to. Right. And you if know, anything, if you started treatments to fix things, you know, you know. not good. And yeah. if you started life at 65, shit, your worst 10 years typically for health, um, physical yeah. well being. I mean, that's the wrong time to start. If anything, yeah. we should reverse it. We should retire at 30 and start working at 65. That's, yeah. that's long been my theory. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's the best years. You do do all the cool shit when you can. Not when, not when your knees aren't working and the heart's not working. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're taking a pharmacy on a yeah. trip. Like, I mean, that, that can't be it. But to your guys' point, I think to me, the concept of retiring should really be more is – is it's I just uh, what I want to do when I retire is just quit doing the shit that I didn't like really doing. Yeah. But okay. all the cool shit that I was doing, like within what we do, like if we could podcast till ninety five, if we made it that far, That'd be awesome. fuck, we are podcasting till ninety five. Hey, we're gonna be like shit, I we're gonna be like the two old guys in the Muppets. The Muppets. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you already are. We already are. What are you talking about? <laughs> All we have to do is just put two ledges on, on our screens oh here. We'd God. be those guys. But you know what? I love that. I'm okay with that. I don't give a crap. I like it. Yeah. I like but I, think it. I like the view from the opera seat. Like, uh, that's, that's, my, that's my jam. I like exactly. it. Exactly. But yeah, I think exactly. that's what it is. I think that's, and I think when I thought of retirement is to not be doing what I didn't want to be doing. Okay. Yeah. Just right. I'm going to do all the cool shit that I, don't, that I want to do. And I don't care about the money as yeah. much as I care about, I want to do this. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So now that's part of my grit statement. I spend the most time doing what I want to and love to do, right? Regardless of how old I am. So if you're listening to this, you need to do some coaching. So one, you can get to where you want to go. And then you help push Sarah Kinlan into retirement faster. <laughs> that's what I just heard. Which it almost sounds like she's almost pretty... there anyway. She's already doing all the only of the stuff. No, no, she, she's, she needs some team. clients. She needs so listeners. Yeah, she needs Absolutely. Some clients. Load her up. Yeah. She needs some clients to push her into retirement. Absolutely. So, so get the F on that and, and go. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I think it's, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a useful thing. I'm actually, I think so when it first started, I kind of thought, oh, geez, another industry created for nothing. And then as you get older and you go through it, you start thinking, geez, I wish I had this when I was I totally 25 yeah. or 30 or 35, you know, in the early stages, you know, if we had, you know, North starred in our early thirties, as opposed to the mid fifties, which is still okay. There's lots of time left. Um, they might've been a different game. No regrets. The way the game plays, well, the way the I, game plays. I think but we just, we bought into. We bought into what our parents things, were selling. Right. Well, we bought into, no, I didn't. Like my well, dad always You, you changed the law, I, right? Yeah. My dad always thought stay. I was some sort of like, he always thought there was something defective of it, but there probably is actually, but, <laughs> but <you laughs> he was like, ended up he stayed in the same place for like all of his life. But you went right? to, like, you still me, went to big you know. secure yes. companies, yes. maybe toward Haba onward, a little riskier, but I hate to tell you, Danon and J and J are not massive risks in life. <laughs> like quitting the jobs is kind of weird. I get it. Cause I'm, I'm like your dad. I don't quit that much, but those are big. Those are pretty secure states of being. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So we yeah, still yeah, buy yeah. into that. He those just goals. never understood it, right? He no, just like, I don't understand. Why do you this quit is a, a good great job? company? Why are you leaving? Right? Why I'm like, you... well, I'm going to another great company. Why? Like, yeah, but you're leaving a great. I don't understand what's exactly. happening here, right? Like, they got pension. You know, they got the retirement. Yeah. Where are you going? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 My dad we, we, the same. Yeah. 30, 35 years in the nuclear industry. Yeah, yeah. that's what you do, though, right? That's yeah. that's the way they did it. And maybe we'll do it too, but what will be is like. I think I've done it. I'm good now. 
20. But you know what? But if you think about it, if you decide to do this for 30 more years, what's yeah. the difference whether it's with uh, Sarah's company or J and J? And if Phil and I decide to do this commerce life podcasting for the next 30 years, do it. a 30 year gig is a 30 year gig. I don't care if no, it's no. corporate or not. No, no, I don't I, I don't think this. so. So but I, I think but I think the love part is the part that really stands. You know, because my dad went to work every day, but you know, like the like I've told you, Kenny, this story before is, you know, to the end, the, the end, the last 20 years, I saw him go to work scared, right? Because he was, especially when you kind of hit like early 50s, 52, to 50s, 53, 54, right? Like you know, the time in our industries where that's, yeah, that's yeah, hurt. yeah. When, when like, you know, and, and so he went to work scared all the yeah. time, right? He was anxious. He was scared. And then it, it made him not love the job. Right? right. Like he loved he loved being an engineer, but made him not love the job. And and so I always got out. I always knew I was getting out because I didn't want to be there. Like I I just and then. You know, without naming names, but when I was at j, &J I saw lots of people around yeah. me, like 50 year olds that would kind of go. Look, I'm, I'm kind of tucked away in the corner. If I just keep doing my thing, maybe nobody sees me. I'm going to squeeze five years out of here I before I make get a radar. And somewhere. then there's a problem to get rid of me. That's yeah, all it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like everybody in those big corporates, they have plans, right? They go, okay, so if I get cut this year, I'm, I'm fucked. But you know what? Like three years from now, if I can just make it through three, we're good, right? And so every right. year when the cuts come, everyone goes, whew, a little <laughs> bit faster than the slowest in the herd. And you're going, no, this is this is a bad way to live, people. Like it's, I think it it's is bad, right? Like you know, yeah. Yeah. but but, but I everybody. think I, you know to finish that is I do think I guess what I hope is even now the kids see when you know like because like <clears throat> Thursdays for Kenny and I are like bonkers. Like yesterday we recorded three podcasts. I we think did one short and three podcasts. With yeah, the, we did like, podcasts, like, you know, four o'clock, five, back, back, to back, to back. Yeah. Not yeah. almost. We had to cut them. Yeah. Start yeah three. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, one. but, but if that was my regular job, right. If that was what I was doing before I'd come out grouchy. Right. And the kids would know. It, right. But now they're seeing, I came up, I was whistling. I was, I was, I was tired, but I was oh, I happy. Done two, right? I could have done two like, more. I was happy. Yeah, I could have. Right? Like I, I was. I was calls. really hungry after the last one. We interviewed a chef no, in the last one. <laughs> and he was killing us. Oh, he was talking about talking mushrooms, mushrooms and like oh my God, morels oh. and you know chanterelles. And I was like, oh God, oh it's like God, ten o'clock running time. in my I'm head. Hungry? Like what the hell, man? But yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think what you're doing is cool. I think you're yeah, going to kill it. Cool. And I think it's just a, it's cool. a good thing in this industry that we actually have uh, people yeah. like you available to yeah. us. So, so yeah. on that, because I actually do have to go to work. Yeah. Um, if someone wants to um, talk to you or potentially use you, how do they best ways, not yeah. way, ways to find you? Yeah, best, best spot is sarahkinlin.com. Um, you can find Sarah Kinlin on LinkedIn as well. And then on Instagram at Pearl Performance Inc. Perfect. Okay. And we'll drop Perfect. all the links in the podcast notes. Um, and if you send that other thing that you're going to send, if you get that, I can't remember we talked about the beginning, there's a link you're going to send, get that to film. You can plop that in there too. Oh, the mm -hmm. fly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yes, and then, so and then we'll, we'll put everything in here and make sure you sign up. So Sarah Kinlin can retire early. <laughs> Or she can just retire in a long time, but just have a really nice ride all the way through. Yeah. No, when retire from her regular job and do the things she loves. Oh, that one she needs to bury. Yeah. That'll be quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah. She's on her way. So we need some listeners to just, yeah, just sign I'll up. Give her a couple more Let's pushes. Go. That yeah, way, yeah. the flow and the ease, it comes. So exactly. come on, people, pay attention. Flow and ease. Click mm -hmm. on the link. Go talk to Sarah. So Awesome. Thank you, Phil and Kenny. Awesome. Thank you to all the listeners. Our pleasure. Very cool. Very fun. Our Thank pleasure. You. Sarah, okay. you have a great day. Phil, stick around yeah. for a minute. Okay. Bye. Sarah, take Bye. care. Take care, Sarah. Out. It's cool. Fun. Very you fun. You know what's funny? Like I, I, like I said, honestly, I remember doing those coachings, and every time they yeah. had them at the fucking last thing I wanted to do yeah. was all these stupid things. I loved, like over the years, because probably Lori was the first, what, first sort of formalized coach that i'd re never really spoken to spoken to and mm -hmm. then since then we've had you know her and now sarah and a few mm -hmm. others in between mm -hmm. you know with Ange and scott, scott i just Ange, yeah, yeah i just i don't know yeah. i think there's a lot of cool people out there that i think it, a lot of the small businesses if you can budget it in you should budget it in 
if you can. And I get it's a cost, but the cost of to uh, to help yourself do better and be better and maybe just change how you view things, I think is pretty critical. You and I are pretty lucky because we've had a bunch of free sessions in essence, even on the podcast where you and I get to talk later and think, okay, how about this? How about this? You know, you start actually using some of what they say, but never. But I, I think, I think it's a critical difference too, is we live, we live in an economy now that isn't, it's not a 30 year, 40 year. Like I, I have friends who go, you know, why do we keep doing layoffs? All I want to do is keep my job and do my job till I retire. And I always say the same thing to them is you can't think that way, right? Like we we're in an evolving society where the skills change. If you're not paying attention, you're going to get caught and then you're going to get left behind. Right. Yeah. And then when you do, it's really hard to find out, and to really out how to catch up. Right. So you, you really need to like, you know, so, so like having someone like Sarah in your life or Scott and Ange or um, Lori, Lori and yeah. Jim, you know, like, and I'm sure we've missed somebody in between, but, but these folks, like they're so great at, at kind of helping to, you know, dial into what you need. Right. So I think they are too. Yeah. I think it's, I, like I said, I, you know, and because a lot of people who know me, I would have been the cynic on this 10, 15 years ago. And I actually think today that just again, even just the small talks we've had with these people, I know you and I, because I can tell after, and even for weeks later, we do talk about it and we do try to, you know, change how we sort of look at things too, because mm -hmm. we're a bit older too, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. not our generation that it's, it's a younger generation that totally seems to get this and they'll have all these people around them. I mean, God bless them for thinking it through. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, we never yeah. did. Nope. And it's tough. Like you said, you know what, unless you're going to be a teacher or work in government, those long-term 30-year jobs, like in the private sector, for sure, in business, 30-year mm -mm. stint is, is going to be pretty rare. It's pretty rare. Almost non-existent, to be honest. Yeah, I won't I say that yet, think, but I think it's probably yeah. getting very close to non-existent. It, it just changes yeah. too quickly. People get bought, sold, moved, shuffled, you yeah. know? But even yeah. if you're in teaching or in government, if you don't keep your skills up and keep your and keep evolving and staying on top of it, you will be, you'll, be, you'll get left behind. Yeah, you really will. Right, you will be. You or really you're just going to end up being like you and I said, you're going to hate your job for the last, the, yep. the, the back 10. Why hate your job in the last of the, like if anything, hate your job at the beginning and grow to love it. Don't go the other way because yeah. toward the end of life, I mean, shit, the misery, yeah. who wants to be miserable? Yeah, 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 that's true. This is when the cool shit starts to happen, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, anyway, that's awesome. it. I got to go Great. to work. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening.